G'day friends! So a few days ago I ordered a few things from Jet Pens and I thought I'd just uh, film me uh, taking them all out and trying them for the first time and uh, just explain to you why I ordered them and what they are and maybe uh, see if you like anything in here and maybe you want it for yourself. I haven't used anything in here I don't think before so my first impressions are literally my first impressions. So I've got the paper here to help me because I don't really know what everything is called. Oh my gosh, I'm such a liar. I've used a Uniball Signo before, but I haven't used one in a long, long time because I've been using the Sakura uh, Jelly Roll and I've also been using this Sakura Souffle. So uh, I see a lot of people using these and since I got uh, some craft, uh, a craft insert, I want to use that in there and some of my black journals. Um, we'll see. I have used this before and I did like it. I think I moved onto a different one because the line writes a little thicker than I wanted for details. That's why I got this one too. This is the Uniball Signo, but I think it's finer. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, here, I got this because I'm so excited. I don't own a traveler's notebook or a leather notebook, whatever they're called. I don't have any of those, but I do love to work in the inserts. So these are traveler's notebook the Traveler's Company brand. And I got one that has Tomoe River paper in it because I was, uh, this one here. This one has Tomoe River paper because a lot of people talk about it and I really, really wanted to give it a go. It says lightweight paper, blank, but I'm pretty sure it's the Tomoe River paper. They were telling me on the website that it's great because you can fit so much, they're so thin. So you've got a lot more pages to work with, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so it's blank. It is light. Let's see if you can see a photo through there. Oh, you can. So this might be fun to trace some stuff in. I've never used one of these before. They look like really, really great quality. I'm sure a million people have reviewed these and, uh, and already explained how great they are. So I'll let you go watch those videos. If that's what you're here for, this is literally just me um, unboxing and uh, showing my first impressions. This one is the Midori paper, so it's, I guess, a little thicker. Yeah, Midori paper white, or MD paper. The best feeling of writing. Paper makes the ink hard to stain and sink through to the other side, so it goes well with fountain pens, which is good, because I ordered a fountain pen, and um, yeah, I'm curious. So this is a 003, and this one was a 013. They're both Traveler's Company branded. This one's got 128 pages, so you can fit a lot more in. This one only has 64. But to be honest, the way I collage a lot of stuff, I have to pull out some papers anyway because the books get too thick and I break them from the binding. And these just have two staples, so I don't think I'll be uh, collaging much in there. I don't know, probably. I'll say that now and then you'll see me try to stick the cat in there, so. <laughs> those are those, and I'm really excited for that. Here we've got the Uniball Signa, so let me get a black something. Huh? Worked straight away. Um, it looks really nice, looks really opaque. Kind of what I remember, thick line. Let me see if this one is any thinner. Yeah, so this one is thinner and that's more what I'm used to using and what I like, the this line weight. But uh, I think they'll both be good because they're quite opaque and a uh, really good brand. So I'm happy with those. This here is the Pilot High Tech C uh, Mica gel pen. Uh, and I think they're Japanese. They got Japanese writing on them, so probably. And uh, the one, this one here is brown, and this one here is apricot orange. This one's uh, 0 0.4 millimeters, and this one's 0 0.3 millimeters. So I'm gonna grab some of this watercolor cardstock and just uh, see how they go. Wow, they're super fine. Oh wow. I actually got these because I wanted to. Um, I wanted to sketch in ink, and this is very, very fine. I got the apricot because I thought it'd be great for skin tones. Uh, not to color them in, but to sketch, you know, faces with them and they would kind of blend in when I was watercoloring it. Speaking of watercoloring, maybe I should test if they're um, waterproof. I'm gonna guess that they aren't, but who knows? All right, I've got the fine Jane Davenport uh, mixed media water brush here. I'm just, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> but, I guess all this means is if I don't want to have to um, actually watercolor whatever I'm doing, I can just spread the ink around like I do with the Incredible Pen. And it, it makes like a nice light, I guess a little um, fake tan kind of looking skin, you know, that little orange glow. So I'm still happy with that. I'm just really happy with that fine thin line. 
I like that. Let me see what the brown looks like. I mean, even though it's 0.1 millimeter difference, you can definitely tell that that one's a lot thinner than this one. It, this is still very, very thin and it writes really smooth and nice. And when you smudge that water out, I guess you can't completely remove it, so it will stain the page. But this kind of reveals maybe like a light reddish brown, which would be fun too. Let's go wet on wet. Yeah, so I like these. The Pilot High Tech C, uh, Apricot Orange and Brown. I'm really into these. I love the way they look too. Look at that little crystal on top. How kawaii. Yeah, I really, really enjoy these. I think they look really fun. This here is the Pilot Petite One Mini Fountain Pen in Blue Black, and this has a fine nib. Now, I foresee myself having a problem with this because look how tiny that is to hold. Uh, I don't think I realized that when I was ordering it because that just seems a little ridiculous for me, but let's have a go. I feel like I've got to do something and I don't know. Well, that wasn't hard to figure out. <laughs> I got this because I wanted to draw with it too and blue black sounded really interesting to me. So let's just give it a little, a little go. All right, I'm gonna put it out there. I don't think this will be waterproof, but we'll, we'll just have it go. All right, definitely not waterproof. But like I said, if your pen isn't waterproof and you do want to watercolor with it, just go with it. Uh, you can get some nice shadows going on there, and I guess essentially it's like watercoloring with the same color that you drew in. Uh, and just pull them around and pull pull that color into the shadow areas. And you've got yourself a nice little, uh, very messy, very sketchy image. But I would say this is more blue than it is blue-black. It's definitely a dark blue, but um, yeah, this is giving me blue. Not so blue-black. I guess it's super portable. I mean, it's just tiny. This is the Platinum Fountain Pen. This one's actually the Platinum Preppy Fountain Pen. And this one's in blue black too, with a, zero point, a 0 0.03 fine nib. So I'm just as curious about this blue black as I was about this one. Let's see if it's any darker. It seems as simple as just pushing them in, but you never know, do you? Oh, that just flooded the well. So this one's giving me very blue. In fact, this one is more blue than that one. So I guess the definition of blue black uh, for pen companies is a little different to mine, which is fine. But uh, if you're thinking about ordering these and you're wondering what the blue black is like, just know it's a lot more blue. In fact, this one makes this one look blue black. This one is just straight up blue. Because I would like to have at least one of these be waterproof. Jeez, what was I thinking? They don't really say that when they're when they're making the um, the listings for them. They don't really explain that. Uh, they're not waterproof or like what their solubility is like. Uh, this looks very reactive with water too. I mean, sometimes I'm thinking, sometimes I'm thinking, I'm thinking right now, like what if I let it really, really dry? But to be honest, if it's this reactive, uh, kind of straight away, then my guess is that no matter how much you let it dry, it's probably going to be a little reactive. I'm also using watercolor cardstock. So, uh, that helps when I'm trying to react you know, reactivate the, the inks with water. This one here, I've got the Pigma Micron 05. This is archival ink, so I'm pretty sure this would be waterproof. Yeah, here it says waterproof and fade proof. And this is in Hunter Green. So I loved the sound of that. This is 0 0.45 millimeters, if uh, you don't know what 05 is. Uh, Hunter Green just sounded like such a nice color and it's like a dark green. So let me see how dark it really is. I wonder why I was attracted to so many dark colors this time. and it's just staying put. So that's good. I, I'm happy that at least one of these was waterproof because I, don't want, I didn't want everything to bleed when I was doing watercolor. Although I can get into some of these effects, uh, they take a lot more concentration and uh, being a bit more precise and careful because you're moving a lot of that ink around. But of course, you can make anything work. It just comes down to how well you are, how good you are at handling it. But I'm just a little, I like to take shortcuts, so. <laughs> and the last thing I got was this uh, Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolor. And this is a single pan and this was in gold, um, number 90. So I don't have any metallic watercolors and I'm curious about them because I've seen a lot of the, um, the pearlescent type ones, the iridescent ones. And I thought, well, I'll just go for gold because that's classic. 
So let me get some of this moving around in here. Oh wow, it looks really pretty when you activate it with water. I'm just curious about it being a watercolor because watercolor to me is uh, very transparent and this is very opaque. So I, to me, it's more just like a water activated gold paint that I guess lays on thin. It goes on pretty thick too, I guess. Yeah, it's metallic, it's gold. I don't expect that you'd probably get like a lot of granulation out of this maybe, or I don't really know what the effect would be if you did it over a large area, kind of like you would a traditional watercolor. Maybe you're mixing it with ink, what happens there? Let's just mix some over this ink and see what happens. It's research. <laughs> this is science. So maybe, yeah, maybe it looks like it's staying pretty separated. So I guess you could get some nice little color pooling and granulation going on. But uh, I guess the color would be like this kind of muted, I don't know, brown, yellow, gold-ish. It's not super metallic once you, once you do it like this. I think this is the way to go. If you want metallic, you kind of just have to lay it on real thick, like it's a, a like an acrylic or a gouache, I guess. Super happy with that. So let me clear all this up and just talk about my final thoughts. So here we got the Traveler's Notebook Refill 013. It's regular size and it's lightweight paper. Uh, I'm really going to enjoy this, I think, because a lot of other people enjoy it, so that's generally the mark of a good product, isn't it? Um, I'm really excited to use that. From my first impression, I think it looks really nicely made and uh, it feels really great and it, it just looks pretty, so. This is the Traveler's Notebook Refill 003 and this is regular size in blank and that's the MD paper. Uh, that also feels really nice. It also looks just as well made as this one. So there's 64 pages in that one and there's 128 pages in this one. Here we've got the Uniball Signo Broad gel pen in white ink. Uh, it's great, super opaque. It is the broad, so it's not going to be your super fine, you know, sketchy line. It's a, it's a little thicker. And this one here is the Uniball Signo Angelic Color in white ink, and that's a 0 0.7 pen size. So this one's just as opaque as this one. So I, this is probably the one I'm going to reach for more often because I like that line weight. Uh, the broad's just a little thick for me to draw in or write in but it would work for, you know, outlining things or putting on a border, I don't know. This will work, it's just, it's, I don't tend to go for this broad one. Here we've got the Platinum Preppy Fountain Pen with blue-black ink. I will say this is just straight up blue ink, it's not blue-black. This is the right pen, it says blue-black on here, but you are probably gonna get a, clo a color close to this. So it's more of a royal blue ink than I would say a blue-black, so just know that, and it's water-reactive. This here is the Pigma Micron 05, it's in Hunter Green, and I love this. This is waterproof and fade proof, and I just think it's a beautiful colour, so I can't wait to sketch with that. This would also be great for uh, practicing your modern botanicals. I know a lot of people are into sketching out modern botanicals these days, and there's some great books about that, so I think this would be great. A great pen for that. The Pilot High Tech C Mica Gel Pen, this is a 0.4mm and this is in brown. I love the look of it, I love the feel of it, and um, obviously I love the little diamond at the top. This is water reactive and this is a nice, um, it's a nice brown, but I will say when it reacts with water it becomes more of a, like a red, a red brown, or I might just say straight up red. So uh, know that. This is the Pilot High Tech C Mica Gel Pen, 0.3mm Apricot Orange, and I love this. It's a very, very fine, sketchy line. Uh, I would say the Apricot Orange is dead on for what colour it looks like to me. I'm also partially colourblind, so who knows? <laughs> and it is water reactive, so I think this is great if you want to, uh, if all you want to carry around is a water brush and a pen, you'll get some great use out of this. The Pilot Petite one mini fountain pen, blue-black. Now, next to the preppy fountain pen, this did look like a blue-black, but I, when I first sketched it out, to me, it just looked like a blue, a darker blue. Uh, so, if you're looking for a super, super dark blue-black, this is not the one for you. If you're also looking for a regular size pen, this is not the one for you. I should have known, because it said petite one, but I, to be honest, I didn't think it was this small. This literally uh, looks like a bullet. So I'm going to I'm going to use this because I think it's a cute little fountain pen. It, it looks like a standard barrel in here, so I think it'd last as long as anything else. Uh, if anything, I think it's great for portability. It's just kind of like when you've uh, you know sharpened down your pencil to within an inch of its life. Uh, that's what this size feels like to me. It's water reactive, so I wouldn't be choosing this one if you're looking for something bulletproof. But it has a nice color to it, and it has a, it reacts nice. I will use this maybe just to write with. 
I, I'm not sure if this will make it into the arsenal of weapons that I used to create with, just because of the size. I like the fountain nib and I like the ink. I just think the size is going to be not something I reach for very quickly. And here's the last thing I got, the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolor in gold. This is number 90, I know they have a few variations on the metallic watercolors. To me, it's more of a gouache than it is a watercolor if you want to get that really metallic sheen to it. Uh, you can still get that watercolor effect of pooling and granulation, but you don't get a very strong metallic when you spread it out that much. So uh, it's super easy to react with the water and uh, it lays on really smooth. I I'm impressed with how metallic it is, and the gold looks like a gold to me. I think uh, I'd be more interested in less of a yellow gold and more maybe like a rose gold or a champagne color. So uh, I just wanted to test this out, and obviously because they sell them loose in single pans, I think that's a great way to, um, to test these out, because a lot of the time you don't want to commit to a whole palette until you've seen if you like what, what you know, what it even does. So overall, I was super happy with this. I, uh, I'm not sponsored by Jet Pens. I don't get paid to say any of this. This is just literally me having a chat with you guys about uh, what I purchased and why. Uh, I think ultimately what I'm most excited about to use is these. What I'm really excited to have back in uh, stock for myself is this, because I go through these. Uh, what I'm not so pleased that I ordered maybe uh, is this. It's cute, but I, it probably just won't function well for me, so I'll probably use it just to write with. Something else I'm excited to use is this Pigma Micron, just because it's it's waterproof and I love the hunter green color. I think it's so nice. This is great to have, but honestly, I don't know how much use I'll get out of it because I don't typically work with metallics. I'll probably put iridescent glitter on something before I put gold on it. I have a few metallic products uh, that are not watercolor, but just metallic things, and I honestly, I never really reach for them. Just because a lot of what I do is photographed or a lot of what I do, uh, you know, I make digital and you they don't read. Unfortunately, they look beautiful in person, but they don't read in the scanner or they don't really show up in photographs unless you're at a ridiculous angle and then your artwork doesn't really look right. So <laughs> uh, that's that. I'm hit or miss with this. I probably didn't need to order that, but it's good to have around, I guess. And these I, I really do love. I honestly probably don't think I'll get as much use out of that one as I do out of this one. I'm more impressed with this one. I think the color was spot on. And uh, I'm just so impressed with how fine that tip is, how fine the nib is. It's honest, it's like a mechanical pencil, but it's ink. I have ordered a few things, a few things from Jet Pens before. They do a lot of Daniel Smith uh, in the tubes, so I like to order those when I've uh, committed to a color. And uh, I also have ordered, uh, I ordered this before. Oh, it's Pilot. I don't really know what it is, but it's actually like a really fine brush, um, like a brush pen but it's like super fine. You can't even really tell, but you can get some different line weights. They're just, it's not a huge variation. Um, I like that as well, just because it, um, it has really good ink and you can react to that. And that one's more of a brown. A lot of the browns must be red based. This is the react, this is this brown when it's reacted. It's like straight up pink now. And here I've got the Mavi Le Pen. This is the pink. I love that one. I ordered that from Jet Pens and I ordered the brown from Jet Pens too. And this brown, like this brown, uh, also has like a very red purple quality to it when you react it with water. I actually don't think the pink is very reactive with water. It's less reactive than those are. So uh, I just thought I'd throw those in there just to show you that like I do order from Jet Pens often. I, uh, I like their website. I like their stuff. Oh no, what did I do? It's alright, I'll probably cover the... I'll cover the cover anyway. Uh, I do like to order from Jet Pens and I think uh, their stuff turns up super quick and it's very competitively priced and they have a huge selection. A lot of it's Japanese stationery which is uh, really really great because it's, it's hard to find around where I live and I'm pretty sure it's easier to find it here than it is most places. So that's saying something and uh, I like that it's all accessible uh, online. So thanks for watching everyone. If there's anything you like and you want to see me try out quicker than other things, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, stay tuned to my Instagram, stay tuned to YouTube, and uh, you'll see these products pop up in those videos, I'm sure. Alrighty, bye.